President Biden wakes up in South Korea in just a few minutes, this trip was supposed to be a victory tour. America's back, the White House says, and respected because of Mr. Biden's leadership on Ukraine. His team hoped to cash in on some of that new swagger and confront China. Somehow China and North Korea, though, did not get the message. The Chinese say they sent nuclear-capable bombers and Navy ships through the South China Sea. It's an area claimed by China, but allies count on America to protect for their shipping routes. Just last week, the Chinese Navy conducted drills closely resembling an invasion of Taiwan. Kim Jong-un of North Korea faces a COVID crisis in the Herbert Kingdom, but he reportedly wants to conduct either a nuclear test or missile launch before Mr. Biden leaves. Former ambassador to the United Nations, national security advisor to President Trump, John Bolton with us now. Mr. Ambassador, it's always good to see you. It would appear as though China and North Korea are not quite as scared as we thought they were, huh? Well, there's a, there's a lot of image projecting here on the part of the Biden administration, but unfortunately, there's no policy to back it up. There's no real policy to deal with the North Korean nuclear weapons threat. And despite a lot of campaign rhetoric in 2020, we still haven't heard what the Biden administration policy for dealing with China is, what the strategy is across the board. So uh, it's not enough. As many senators on congressional delegations kind of blow into a foreign capital, spend a couple days, talk to the top leadership, blow out to another foreign capital. Uh, that's not what foreign policy really is. And I think what Biden actually is going to hear from the new president of uh, South Korea and the relatively new Japanese uh, prime minister is we've got a serious problem here and we need some American leadership. When it, when it comes to American leadership on this, what, it, what does it look like? There's Politico reporting that the United States behind the scenes is trying to arm and train Taiwan in the way uh, they did uh, Ukraine. Uh, tough talk from China. China warns of dangerous situation developing ahead of Biden's Asia trip. Quoting a call between Mr. Biden's national security advisor, China's top diplomat, if the U.S. side persists in playing the Taiwan card and goes further down the wrong path, it will surely put the situation in serious jeopardy. Can you be tough in action, but not in words, and the Chinese still get the message? Sure. I, look, I think this is a complicated situation. I, I don't think we fully understand how to deter China from an attack on Taiwan or trying to create a scenario where we back down and they get control of the island uh, be, because of our weakness. Uh, and ironically, although it's true that uh, the administration is talking about how to defend Taiwan, they're doing it the wrong way. They're talking about purely self-defensive weapons in effect once the Chinese land. Uh, Taiwan has a real advantage over Ukraine, and we ought to take advantage of it. Uh, that is that it's 100 miles away by sea from China. So what Taiwan really needs are anti-ship missiles like our harpoons and comparable capabilities so that the Chinese ships don't get close enough to land anybody. They're being sunk off the Chinese coast. That's not what the Biden administration is trying to do, though. I'm glad you brought up harpoons because it's the very same missiles we would not sell Ukraine uh, a couple of years ago that they wanted to protect the Black Sea and be able to, to sink uh, Russian uh, ships that that in the end is what sort of created a lot of the winds for Russia down in the southern part of the country. This from the New York Times. Um, the war in Ukraine is getting complicated and America isn't ready. It's important to note that this is not a op-ed piece. This is the editorial board in a signed editorial. It is still not in America's best interest to plunge into an all-out war with Russia, even if a negotiated peace may require Ukraine to make some hard uh, decisions. Uh, there is a limit to how far the United States and NATO will go to confront Russia and limits to the arms, money, and political support they can muster. Confronting this reality may be painful, but it's not appeasement. This is what governments are duty-bound to do, not chase after an illusionary um, win. This is the New York Times and, and Rand Paul. I didn't know who, who was writing this. Well, it certainly sounds like Rand Paul. Look, I, I think the U.S. position on the most important issue in the war has been clear uh, for 30 years, and that is that we favor Ukrainian sovereignty over its entire territory. That means going back to the way it was pre-2014 at the time of the first Russian invasion during the Obama administration. That's certainly the position of Vla Volodymyr Zelensky and, and I think 95% of the Ukrainian people. 
Now, if Biden isn't prepared to to continue that policy, then he needs to articulate that. And we need to have a debate about it in this country. I think the Times is right on one point. We don't have a strategy and we don't have a clear definition of what victory is. And mm -hmm. that I do think it's important for us and the Ukrainians to have. I, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought up the idea that we're not having a debate and we're not having a policy. It's just sort of do anything, everything. Uh, more money, vote, vote, vote. Uh, if you if you don't agree with everything that Ukraine wants, you're you're pro-Russian. It's almost the same thing about Finland and Sweden joining NATO. There was just never really a, a real foreign policy discussion. It seems uh, about this. A agree or disagree with what's happening? Why aren't we having that robust and real debate? Well, I think in the case of Finland and Sweden, that's pretty straightforward from the U.S. point of view. But but on the question, for ex example, of the recent uh, bill to provide $40 billion worth of assistance, uh, it is legitimate to debate pieces of that bill. You know, I remember way back in the day when you could offer amendments to bills to strike sections you didn't like. Uh, sometimes that's not possible. I thought Ted Cruz actually made a statesmanlike speech about that bill, he said there were provisions in it that he didn't like. He enumerated what they were. But he said, nonetheless, I think the moment demands that we pass this bill because you, Ukraine needs the assistance. There's nothing wrong with debate. We've got to justify to the American people why we're taking these steps. We shouldn't be afraid of it. Yeah, well, um, you, you make a good point in, in terms of time being of the essence, especially for the Ukrainians. Mr. Ambassador, uh, it's always good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.